Okay, best science breakthrough. What do you got, Freeberg? Everybody wants to know the Sultan of Sciences. Best science breakthrough. I'm a little bit um, blinders on this one because mm -hmm. I think I mentioned this on the show a few weeks ago, and I'm spending quite a bit of time at work on it, which is that starch synthesis system that was demonstrated by those Chinese scientists. Um, and, and the system itself is likely not going to be the production system that saves the world. But the concept that we can take proteins that are expressed by different plants and put them together in a tank, and then that tank can convert molecules from one form to another by leveraging these proteins that just interact and move, move around in the tank is really an incredible demonstration. And the demonstration is inspiring. We can take carbon out of the atmosphere and make food with a minimal amount of renewable electricity. Um, and I think that's really um, a moment that will inspire a whole new realm of industrial synthetic biology work, uh, a lot of which I hope to kind of, you know, build and participate in pretty heavily in the work that we do day to day. But it was really exciting for me. So the starch synthesis, synthesis system is your uh, best science breakthrough. What do you got, Sachs? I've got these new oral COVID antiviral pills that are coming out from Pfizer and Merck. The FDA is supposed to be approving mm, them by the end one. of this week. Uh, as you'll recall, last year around this time, it was these new mRNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna, but we now have to admit that the vaccines have not ended the pandemic because the virus can uh, mutate its spike proteins around the, the um, vaccine. So the vaccines by itself cannot end the pandemic. These new uh, pills have, I think, a, a very good shot of doing it next year because they're protease inhibitors, so they stop the virus from replicating. And just and even if the uh, spike proteins mutate, it will not prevent these protease inhibitors from working. So I am hopeful that this will be the thing, hopefully, that ends the pandemic next year are these new uh, hmm. antiviral pills. Great one. I would like to make a counter to Sachs's um, <laughs> oh, point. I would be very cautious about the side effects that are going to arise from these protease inhibitors. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not as well studied as they normally would be, but there are, they have a serious biological effect in normal cells in the human body. Um, and I think as more people use them, you'll see more crazy stories about side effects that are really, uh, significantly what do you think the side adverse. effects would be? Well, there's a, there's a lot that are well documented, oh. but the way they work biologically is, is they disrupt, um, you know, certain systems. Uh, and, and those are not just systems related to the virus, they're systems in our own cells. And so I, I, I'm personally quite nervous about them. I know that folks are, are pretty encouraged by them and excited, but I'm nervous about them. There's a similar medication that's been developed uh, for HIV, right? Uh, uh, that's called PrEP, right? Um, does that cause similar side effects or because people use that prophylactically? Yeah, to some extent, you know, and the dosage matters. <laughs> and so normally you would go through many more years, I think, of testing on these things to kind of truly quantify you know, when you have half a percent or 1% of a population, you know, let's say, take the most extreme case, die, then a million people use it, you're going to have a lot of people dying. Um, and, and I'm not sure we've really gotten the, the boundaries of this yet. And the dosage is pretty significant on them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, like, let, let, let's, you know, let, let's keep a watchful eye on this stuff. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'm also nervous. Well, hopefully the number of people who need to take it, Freeberg, correct me if I'm wrong, if we've got this many people vaxxed who will not need to take it, and then Omicron. My Omicron biggest optimism is just through. that Omicron yeah. is a um, much less virulent virus and it sweeps yeah. through the population and we slowly see this pandemic kind of, you know, becoming less severe. Which is what was predicted. Do you, do you think herd immunity even exists? The, in, the, in the way that the virus evolves, no. Uh, so um, there, and by the way, it's not binary. Uh, it's not like, hey, you get herd immunity and no one's going to catch this thing. There's clearly a spectrum of immunity. Meaning like I can maybe get the virus and be somewhat contagious for half a day or a day and I don't even know it. And then I'm spreading it for that half day, but I didn't even know I had it. Um, that's kind of, you know, not all the way over to herd immunity and the traditional kind of definition of the way that we talk about it. Um, but it reduces the spread and the severity in aggregate. Um, on the other end is like everyone gets it. It spreads like crazy. No, no vaccine stops it, changes anything. No amount of antibodies changes anything and everyone just dies. Um, and so somewhere in the middle, I think, is where we find our kind of, you know, our ground. But I, I don't think that the traditional definition or the way that people talk about herd immunity, which is, hey, everyone get the shot and this thing's over, uh, is going to play out that way at all. This is going to be a slow, slow wind down. Okay. And to give Shamat some credit, you said it would be a nothing burger. And uh, so far, it looks like 
deaths and hospitalizations, specifically ICUs uh, admittance, has not turned out to be a major issue yet. Knock on wood. Unless something escapes from the lab again, I think that we're be- <laughs> we're going to be okay. I think this is the end of the end. So oh, that would be so great if this was the. Uh, end of the end game. My best science breakthrough is that this year we actually were able to inject in vivo, so in the body genetic code for CRISPR, two cases specifically. One was to basically reduce the production of this toxic liver protein in a bunch of folks. And then the second one moderately improved the vision of some people who had some form of inherited blindness. And that's pretty incredible stuff that you can, you know, make something uh, put it into your body, and then you know your body does the work of editing out the bad genes. And um, that's a, I think that's a pretty incredible breakthrough. I had the starch on my list too, but um, I went with Starship. Uh, for people who don't know, on March third, Starship serial number ten, SN ten, completed SpaceX third high altitude flight test of a prototype type, and they were able to ascend um, and then reorient themselves and land. If you don't know starship is ginormous when compared to the falcon and the other rockets uh that spacex has produced i got to see it actually i went to boca and when you look inside that nose cone uh you can fit 300 people in it uh it is a payload that is absolutely unprecedented in terms of sending people or things to space and the fact that this has succeeded means all um, uh, the folks at SpaceX uh, need to do is to scale it. And they're pretty good at scaling things. They just had their 100th landing of their smaller rocket. And so when this uh, big boy, this uh, BFR, big freaking rocket gets going, it's going to change the nature of our species as multi-planetary planetary, uh, and being able to reach and put things in space that we've never been able to do. So kind of an engineering feat, but I put it under science. Uh, and also to not pick the same one as Freeberg. Do you think Starship is going to be able to orbit Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Bleep it out, Nick. No, well, Nick. No, you can't take that out. We have veto rights. Yeah. You can't well, take that out. Nick, releasing you can't. No, no, no. All, all of this needs to stay. All right. Biggest flash 